Guten Tag und hallo, schön, dass Sie wieder da sind. 13 Wochen lernen wir Deutsch. Und jetzt wissen wir eigentlich schon ganz viel. Doch hier und da tauchen noch ein paar nervende Fehler auf. Und darum geht es heute. Die häufigsten Fehler. Aber Sie, meine Lieben, Sie sind nicht fehl am Platz. Ich bin Billy Berger und das ist Bausteine 1. Herzlich willkommen. Okay, so if you have deciphered my introduction or maybe just read the title of the video, you'll know that this week we're rounding off the course with a quick look and I'm gonna try and make it quick, a quick look at the most frequent mistakes. But instead of looking at all of those little things that commonly go wrong, those things that I've been banging on about for the last 13 weeks, like, I don't know, like verb not in the second position, no capitals for nouns, wrong adjective endings, wrong articles, wrong cases, and all of that sort of thing. No, I want to look at the bigger picture. There's a whole section in your textbook, im Anhang, in the appendices, in which I go over the most common mistakes. And I give you examples of each one, show you what to do and what not to do. So I'm not going to repeat all of these here, but what I do want to do is to talk about the five common mistakes in the way we approach the learning of the language approach using the language, especially writing and speaking. So here we go. First of all, you are asking for trouble if you write or think in English and then start trying to translate. If you go about it this way, then you're not concentrating on what you can do, what you are able to say. The chances are you'll end up with lots of sentences, lots of verbs, lots of other elements that are a lot more complex than you know how to deal with and translate into German. Instead, what you should be doing is focusing on what you are able to say, what you know already. Concentrate on the positives. So for this, of course, you are going to have to have a clear picture of what a sentence looks like and what it doesn't look like. It will have a subject and a verb, of course, maybe even two verbs if you're lucky, but of course only in certain situations. And if you've got any more than that, well, you've probably made a mistake, this stage at least. And you'll know whatever you do to introduce that verb as the second idea in a sentence, and then add in the most appropriate time phrases to talk about when something happens before you move on to the other elements like how, or where, and maybe you might even finish up with a nice object at the end. And if you're still not done, well, slap on a conjunction and keep going. So let your knowledge of the German sentences, the structure of the German language, and your memory of vocab, of course, dictate what you say, not what you're able to say already in English. And so this is where your cheat sheet that you've been developing will come in handy as a bit of a reminder of all of that good stuff you have learned. Now, occasionally, look, there will be words that you don't know. So of course you're going to have to look up words in the dictionary. Otherwise, we'll never get better. We'll never expand out our ability to be able to express ourselves. And so this brings us then to the second most common mistake. Make sure you are looking up the right sort of word in the dictionary. Our online dictionary is great, but if you don't know if the word you're looking up is meant to be a noun, an adjective, preposition or something else, you will run into problems pretty quickly. Let's think about a situation, this one. Let's say, I don't know, you're a bit of a history buff and you want to bone up on all of those fascinating facts of European history to bore all of your friends at the next party. Well, you're good to go because you know the word for history is Geschichte, but for the life of you, 
you can't remember how to talk about European history. So a quick look under the table at Leo will give you all the info you need, or will it? And this is what we find. The very first word is Europea. Now, fantastic, you think. But have you found the right word? Well, yes, European is Europea in German. But look again, this is a noun. And should it be? Well, you're talking about European history. So you're describing the history. So you're going to need an adjective. And for that, you're going to have to scroll down a little bit further to get to the right word. And while you're at it, slap on an ending onto that adjective because we are using it before a noun, aren't we? So common mistake number two is forgetting to think about the sorts of words, the role of that word that you're looking up. And that maybe sometimes you're gonna to need to change that word that you find by adding on an adjective ending or maybe even using the plural form. This brings us to mistake number three. And this is forgetting what I said to you back in the introduction to our textbook, Baulsteiner 1. German is not English. Well, this is obvious, you think to yourself, I'm not completely stupid. And yes, I would agree. However, if we forget, we might end up with a sentence like this, where all sorts of nasty English habits have reared their very ugly heads. Now, let me count those off for you. Here's our sentence. Am Wochenende, ich esse Frühstück in der Stadt mit meiner Familie um 11 Uhr. So, yes, that looks pretty cool. Nice, big, long sentence telling us all about meeting up in the city with the family for breakfast at 11 o'clock. Ooh, and look at that, starting off with a nice time phrase instead of the subject. Not bad. But wait, what on earth is that comma doing there? You're not separating elements in a list. You're not separating sentences. So forget about using a comma. Generally, I think, if you haven't written a whole sentence with a subject and a verb, then you've got no excuse to be using commas. Let's keep going. Oh, hang on, hang on. Why is your verb not in the second position? Yes, because that's the way we do it in English, isn't it? And thirdly, only nouns get capitals. So why, why has that word ich got a capital on it? Well, I think we already know the answers because we write I with a capital in English. A bit of a relief, your verb's got the right ending, but wait, what on earth is Frühstück? Well, it's meant to be a noun, so let's make it into one. Let's get a capital on that. What's that you say? Yes, I know we don't capitalize nouns in English, but this isn't English. And while we're at it, it's, have we spelled Frühstück properly? Not really. Let's fix that too. But wait a minute, hang on. You can't eat breakfast. Yes, I know you've translated straight out of English. Well, we do eat breakfast, but this is German. So we're going to have to get rid of all of that. We've got a whole verb for this situation. Let's get rid of that S and bit. Change our verb to the right one. Now that's better. Okay, on we go. Now that's nice. In der Stadt. You've remembered that location is dative. Nice work. But oh dear, what's that? You've got the next elements in the wrong order. Time, manner, place is what we're meant to be doing. So let's swap those around the right way. Okay. Well, finally, that's better. Except I think that we've forgotten to use the dative after the preposition mit, so it can't be meine familia. Well, that was exhausting. I think we better move on. Brings us to common mistake number four. And this is not learning actively. And this is also something I mentioned back at the beginning. You need to write, speak, repeat. 
This is a university course. So you've got lots of information coming your way, lectures, tutes, workshops, videos like this one, as great as that all is. It's still not enough. It's not enough to passively let it all flow over you and hope that some of it's going to sink in. You need to write, speak, repeat, actively engage with the content, write it down, rewrite it, write it down again, categorize it, summarize it, use it, practice it, write out some tables once, twice, three times and more. Do the exercises, do them again. Talk with others, make mistakes, make yourself understood. Practice the language you're trying to learn. It's not enough to say, yeah, look, I think I understand that. You've got to be able to use it. It's not enough to read through a textbook or listen to a video and think, oh, yeah, I get that. So write, speak, repeat. And this brings us to... Common mistake number five, giving up too soon and not appreciating what you've achieved. It's easy to concentrate on all the things that are difficult and learning a language is hard. You were trying to do what it took you years and years of practice to achieve the first time around. So you need to be patient and just keep going. Be realistic. Don't expect perfection straight away. Some of our best students barely got a pass in the first year, but they enjoyed the challenge, kept going, didn't give up, asked for help when they needed it, and didn't get discouraged. Stick at it, practice. Celebrate how much you already know now that you didn't know 13 weeks ago. Yes, there's always going to be more to learn, but that's what keeps it interesting. And whether or not you're going to continue studying German next semester, don't lose what you have worked so hard to learn. I've got lots of useful links for you below to check out and practice over the break or just to keep your German motor ticking over until you get a chance to use it. And seek out those opportunities. There are lots of German-speaking people in the community around you, either living here are visiting. And so that is it. Five common mistakes and perhaps not necessarily the ones you were expecting. But as I said at the beginning, there's a whole section on this in your textbook. So look through this section at the back of your textbook to identify some of the other common mistakes that you might be making and see how to correct them. And so das war's dann für heute, diese Woche und auch dieses Semester. Mir hat es riesen Spaß gemacht, mit Ihnen zu arbeiten. Ich wünsche Ihnen also eine schöne Woche, ein schönes Jahr. Und wie immer, wenn Sie Fragen haben, melden Sie sich unten in den Kommentaren. Ich würde mich freuen. Alles Gute, auf Wiedersehen und Tschüss. Das war's. Tschüss.